What's up, Navigating Academia community? This is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh coming to you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. You guys know I love you. Please do me a huge favor before we get started today and smash that thumbs up button, that like button underneath this video. And make sure that not only this video, but all of the videos here on Navigating Academia get out to as many individuals as possible who've never even experienced our channel. So at the end of the day, guys, if you have not subscribed already, would love to have you here as part of the community. Be sure to comment below if you enjoyed the video or if you absolutely hate it and you want me to know, just to sock it to me. Feel free. That'd be great. Ironically, helps the algorithm. So that's a good thing. In any case, here's the question that we've got today from Utsav. Thank you so much, mate, for writing. And thank you for enjoying the channel. I appreciate it. So uh, Utsav gave this question on one called uh, how to get publications as an undergraduate. Uh, turns out bribery. Bribery. No, kidding. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Utsav's question is, Hi, Doc. I've been trying to publish my first research paper on astrobiology in any renowned journal. I have amended it more than 50 times and still it gets rejected for minor mistakes. Is there any suggestions from your side? And is there any type of backdoor monopoly behind the publication? Uh, I smile because I'll, I'll explain. All right. So because I have seen a lot of bogus papers which don't even deserve to be in that renowned journal. All right. I love the question, man. I have read it like two or three times over the past week since you posted it. And, and it brings a smile to my face every time because I get it, man. I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, it can feel like that, can it? Uh, especially if we don't have many publications. Uh, I remember when I did my first several, man, I submitted and submitted and submitted. And these things got rejected and rejected and rejected. I'm just telling you, right? So don't worry. If, if you don't have a lot of experience getting stuff published, it can really feel like there's this monopoly in these things. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, one thing that I will say is that it is true that there are a lot of academic cliques within different fields, astro, you know, biology, I'm sure is, it's true of them as well in all of their journals. At the end of the day, you have to remember that the people behind journals are other human beings. And honestly, it's pretty easy to figure out who wrote articles, even if it's the case that something is double blinded. It's pretty easy to figure it out. If you want me to make you a video to be able to tell you how you figure that out, let me know in the comments below and I'll, uh, I'll be sure to do that guys. And the more up votes it gets, the more likes that comments get, that comment gets, the more likely I am to be able to take the time to make that video for you. So be sure to hit that. Uh, in any case, so are there any suggestions from my side? Well, here's what I can say. Uh, when you say any renowned journal, uh, a renowned journal, that can mean so many different things, right? Because uh, a journal being renowned, usually what you mean is that it's a high impact journal. In other words, it has a high impact factor. If you don't know what an impact factor is, I made a whole video for it on the channel. Watch that video. Uh, but just because something is high impact does not necessarily mean that it's kind of the right journal for your article. If the article, for example, concerns something with a very small sample size, maybe it's on a very niche topic, maybe it's a very brief article, maybe it's an extraordinarily long article, whatever it is, it may not have the best goodness of fit for the journals that you're submitting to. A lot of people make the mistake made of just basically saying, what are the best journals in my field? Okay, I'm gonna take my piece, I'm gonna send it. Keep in mind that those are the journals that also get the most submissions, meaning that the rejection rate is usually crazy high. So for example, something like British Medical Journal, you're dealing with you know less than a 5% acceptance rate. Uh, and obviously, the number of articles that are getting submitted for consideration are massive. So there's a lot of what are called desk rejections as well. The, the thing that I'm pleased to see, though, is that in your message here to me, it says uh, that you've amended it more than 50 times and it gets rejected for minor mistakes. Now, I don't know what you mean by minor mistakes, right? But the good news is that it seems like they're giving enough feedback for you to make modifications, especially if you're newer to the game. Mate, I, I swear to you, it, it, it's something that's very frustrating, but you should expect to have to go and make changes 50 times. Uh, you know, I have a colleague of mine in uh, Las Vegas and she had a manuscript that she wrote up. I'm not kidding. There were 2000 revision suggestions, which may seem frustrating. To me, that's the most phenomenal thing I've heard in my life because that is not normal at all. But it definitely is something where at the end of the day, now those changes were, you know, little spelling things, grammatical things, comments, you name it. That's very odd. That's not normal. And I remember when she first saw it, she was frustrated. But it's one of these things where the thing that I told her, which I do believe to be true, is that people are spending their valuable time and doing it for free. For free. If you wanted me to, to read the article and read through it, 
I'm going to charge you every single hour that I read it because that's how I do things. Other people, you know, don't do it that way and that's fine. That's how I do things, right? Uh, and it's because I've got 15 years of doing nothing but working as a publication consultant and an academic in my own right. And it's the reason why I have a 100% acceptance rate for every book proposal I've ever written, for every special issue proposal I've ever written. I've never gotten one rejected once. And when it comes to articles, I've had stuff published in some of the most high impact journals in my field, in general medicine, you name it, right? But, but this came at a huge cost of a tremendous number when it comes to articles, right? So not the books and not the special issues. We're talking about just straight up articles. You're gonna get rejected a lot. It, it happens, it gives you a thicker skin, it's not a bad thing, right? And it is natural that, you know, when we're trying to publish something, that at the end of the day, the, it, it, let's put it this way, not everything is publishable. It's just not. There's very clever ways to get around things, but it's just not. So if it's your first research paper, like you're saying, uh, probably it's not something that's going to get published in a really high impact journal or renowned journal. If it has an impact factor in the first place, that should be good enough for your first for your first article, right? Uh, after that or whatever, just keep working from there, you know, work it up. You'll get into higher impact journals eventually if the work is significant enough. And remember, it doesn't matter if you and I think it's significant. It matters if in the context of the field and where it stands at this moment and just in the culture of the field at the moment, whether or not that topic is hot or not, whether it's perceived to be important or not. So yes, and trust me, mate, in terms of, you know, every single time that you are submitting to a new journal, you got to reformat the whole thing, right? In terms of new instructions for authors, references, all this kind of stuff, new cover letters, sometimes picking new peer reviewers, it can be a massive pain in the butt. So please know that I understand that. I've been there myself right? And it's very frustrating. The one thing that I can tell you is that I never want you to forget these experiences you're having now because the people that you end up training, once you get really, really good at this, right? And you can teach other people how to do it. And hopefully you can make money doing it. It's a good thing. Uh, at the end of the day, oh my gosh, you're going to want to be able to empathize. And there's no way that you could empathize if all your stuff from your first research paper onward got accepted. So that's what I'll say. Uh, again, I don't know what minor mistakes are Again, if, if, if you say they're minor, one thing that some people say is minor is let's say that uh, something is supposed to be like my reference management style is American Psychological Association, APA style. So let's say that I have like three APA errors and then people are like, well, that's one of the reasons it's rejected. And you may get frustrated and say that's so minor. That's not minor. That's not minor. The reason it's not minor is that if I can't even trust someone to get the references right, who knows what else they got wrong? Or if let's say they didn't you know, calculate statistical power right? And you may say, this is so minor. My, my sample size was large enough. Fair enough. And you could be right. But at the same time, to the readers, it wasn't minor to them. And if it wasn't minor to them, it really doesn't matter what we think about it. All that matters is the consumer, which in this case is the peer reviewers and the editorial board of our target journal. So just take that into consideration, right? Because it may be that you need to reframe a little bit. When we have a study that's our first study, our first paper, we get very close to it. And it's almost like we uh, have this level of intimacy with the paper that somebody else rejecting it, it almost feels like they're rejecting us. I can tell you now like 80 papers and five books later that it really doesn't bother me for somebody to get rejected. But I promise you at the beginning, it felt like somebody was like throwing my baby in the trash. That's what it felt like. It feels super painful. So just know that I know where you're coming from. Um, and in terms of bogus papers, don't even deserve to be in that renowned journal. I, I feel you. I feel you. Oftentimes we can read these things. We get a little bit bitter about things. Trust me, I understand. Uh, what you'll find is that these journals, there's no monopoly or anything, but there are those clicks that I mentioned. And in those clicks, let's say the click is like, you know, 10 people from seven different universities and they all went to grad school together. They all had mentors who knew each other, whatever it is. They've kind of climbed the ranks together. They're associate professors usually or maybe about to be or just became full professors. And these guys basically all put one another down as the preferred reviewers uh, or they're already on the editorial board for the target journal. So they'll put those people down. And obviously there's going to be preferential treatment that those people get. It's implicit bias in most cases. There's not some like explicit plan to screw everybody else in the field or anything like that in academia. In some cases, maybe that does exist, but uh, let's put it this way. I'm a realist, but at the same time, I'm optimi optimistic enough to believe that that's a thing. So in any case, uh, hopefully that helped a little bit. 
Keep going. Look at mid-range journals in terms of impact factor in your field. You don't have to look at all the highest ones, and I don't want you to get frustrated when stuff gets rejected. But that is my guidance to you. So thank you so much again for watching, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Talk to you soon. Lots of love. Peace.